안녕하십니까? Greetings, I'm Dr. Son y o n g h e of Eagle Dental Clinic. Today, I'm going to talk about basics of sinus surgery. This is going to be a introductory session. When we think about sinus surgery, the sinus is actually filled with just air. And as shown, graft material is used to regenerate the bone. Within the air-filled cavity, bone is regenerated, and this refers to sinus surgery. Let me show you a different case. Extraction is done, and when implant is placed without penetrating the sinus membrane, sinus membrane is detached, bone graft is done, and implant is placed. After implant placement, loading is applied, and the sinus floor's outline is reformed within a sinus cavity. This is what we call a sinus surgery. Let's look at objective diagram. Within the sinus, membrane is detached and space is secured, and in that space, graft material or blood-filled cavity is formed to regenerate the bone. This refers to sinus surgery. In the past, it didn't really receive limelight, but with the introduction of implanted treatment, it has become mainstream and it is gaining a lot of attention. In the past, when there was a sinusitis, sinus surgery was the only option to treat these symptoms. In 1800s, Caldwell and Luke introduced the surgical technique, and in the early days, Caldwell-Luke operation was performed. Androstomy type of sinus surgery was performed only. With the introduction of implanted treatment, surgical techniques to regenerate bone within the sinus cavity became introduced. In the early days, osteotome was used for sinus floor elevation. In 1976, Dr. Tatum talked about the sinus lift in Alabama. In 1987, Dr. Tatum reported of lateral wall approach and crestal approach for the first time, and it has continued since. At the time osteotome was used, bone spreading or sinus floor elevation was performed. In 1980, Dr. Boyne introduced a lateral window osteotomy technique and talked about how to do graft. In other words, he announced that track door osteotomy and many advancements have been made since. In 1994, Dr. Summers announced a Summers osteotome technique. Up until then, a rich expansion osteotomy was performed, but since then, sinus floor was fractured to elevate the sinus floor. Bone added osteotome sinus floor elevation was introduced. Summer's osteotome is unlike a rich expansion osteotome. It's flat and concave. Sinus floor elevation or green stick fracture was performed. It's more favorable for that. Concave type of osteotome type is observed here. The effect you can get with this is that you can do bone elevation and bone compaction. So two birds in one stone. Sinus osteotome that are used these days, most of them have concave form. Next, I'm going to talk about BAOSF e bone added osteotome sinus floor elevation. Summer's osteotome is used to fracture sinus floor, and within the sinus, bone is added 
sinus floor is elevated and using this bone regeneration is achieved this can be done at the same time as implant placement you can do staged approach you can do sinus floor elevation and generate bone and then do implant placement you can do two kinds of approaches with bone added osteotome sinus floor elevation or baosfe however most of these techniques come with side effects one of the most common side effects is that the patient suffers because osteotome involves malleting patient feels a significant discomfort upon malleting there were ways that forego osteotome you can lift the sinus floor using these kind of drills and such techniques have been developed at first we only used osteotome dsr sld ai drills have become available as for ai drill it's used for brain surgery if there's no resistance the drill doesn't work so once it reaches the sinus floor it does not advance further as a ca sla lifting have been developed in austin there's casket and last kit crystal approach has become more safer and comfortable this is the same for lateral approach as well continuous improvements have been made and are still being attempted many ways have been devised to regenerate bone within the sinus the reason is once extraction occurs pneumatization continues to occur in sinus and vertical height of bone becomes reduced that's why the sinus lift is performed the purpose of sinus surgery is to secure space for bone regeneration a traumatic detachment of sinus membrane is the key in the space in between, we need to make sure the detached membrane does not stick as well, so you need to make blood-filled cavity or put bone graft material here to maintain space. And within the space, we need to regenerate bone. That is the most important concept that we should bear in mind. Second, around the implant, there needs to be an ideal bone shape. Bone graft material needs to be placed within the secure space if there is sinus membrane perforation or if the bone graft does not surround the implant properly, then we won't get ideal results. As shown around the implant, there needs to be bone graft material or else bone will not be regenerated. Appropriate space should be secured, and around that, there should be, when you look at the CT, graft materials to get to bone regeneration around the implant. The goal of sinus surgery is to get stable bone regeneration. In order to secure sufficient space, Doing sinus membrane elevation without the sinus membrane perforation is the key and maintaining the space is also very important. If you look at the four different examples, at a glance we can see which is most ideal. As shown in number one, around the implant, appropriate bone graft materials are positioned and the elevated sinus membrane is well maintained that is the goal we are heading for as shown if membrane elevation is only done on one side or incomplete or if there is perforation and scattering of bone graft material then it would lead to less than ideal situations the first is most important when we do sinus surgery, there are many precautions that we should take. The first precaution is that we need to avoid the sinus membrane perforation. Second, we need to minimize the surgical trauma. 
That is very important. When there is membrane perforation, as shown, it can be baffling. In order to manage membrane perforation, additional techniques may be necessary, and the extent of surgery may become increased, and as shown, post-operative swelling can be experienced by the patient. The surgical time can be extended as well as surgical field. Extended surgical time and surgical field can increase the possibility of post-op side effects. We need to make measures to prevent these. As mentioned, sinus surgery can be divided into largely two different techniques. First is crestal approach and second the lateral approach. When to do crystal approach or lateral approach? There's no specific criteria, however, in terms of crystal approach and lateral approach, we look at the residual bone height in determining which to perform. When to do which between crystal and lateral approach? Using residual bone height is best. In most cases, a crystal approach is used when there's over 4 mm of residual bone, and if there's less than 3 mm of residual bone, lateral approach is done. The amount of bone that needs to be generated can also be used as a criteria. When choosing between crystal approach and lateral approach, the most common way is to use a residual bone height, and you can also consider residual cortical bone thickness. And more than anything else, you need to consider operator's experience. If you can do crystal approach even with less than 4 mm of residual bone, then you should go forward. In general, when we look at the universal criteria, we utilize the residual bone height. The crystal approach is easier than lateral approach and the surgical site is not extensive and because of that healing occurs faster. And that's the pro of crystal approach. If the residual bone amount is 4 to 5 millimeters, then it would be ideal to use crystal approach. When doing lateral approach, the surgical technique required is higher and the surgical site is more extensive, uh, vertical releasing incision is involved, and the sinus window needs to be opened. Therefore, the surgical site is larger and patient discomfort goes up. You need to make your choice appropriately. The biggest issue is this. Crystal approach is very favorable in many ways. However, it has the critical downside of being blind technique. All blind techniques have limitations. You cannot see for yourself whether the sinus floor has been lifted or whether membrane has been torn. There are limitations with blind techniques, so this needs to be considered. By utilizing pre-op CT and other data, we need to look at the sinus floor's irregularity, the sinus floor form, slope, and inclinations should all be considered. And you need to make your choices accordingly. The pros and cons of crystal approach and lateral approach. The advantage for crystal approach is disadvantage for lateral approach, and vice versa. It's a double-edged sword. What we need to think about is that you cannot utilize just one technique for all circumstances. Depending on the patient's situation, we need to choose the appropriate procedure and apply it. Crystal approach is done using two different kits. You can use osteotome 
or also use CAS kit. In the case of lateral approach, you can use the conventional tools like Berg and Sinus Curette to do lateral approach. Last kit would help you do lateral approach more conveniently. Let me first explain about osteotome. Honestly speaking, we rarely use osteotome when doing crestal approach. However, you need to have it. If you do not have it in your store, then you will not be able to respond to situations where it's necessary. Personally, if you think you're going to do sinus surgery, then I think it's mandatory that you have it. The osteotome kit is sold from Ostem consists of concave osteotome or summer's osteotome. There are five of them. And there are also five expansion osteotomes. Ten osteotomes and mallets consist the kit. In the case of sinus surgery, concave osteotomes are mostly used. In the case of convex and osteotome, this is not used to fracture the sinus floor. As shown, expansion is done or compaction is done using this. By doing compaction in soft bone, we can get better primary stability. This will be addressed a little while later. In the case of convex osteotome, this is used for expansion. It does not penetrate the sinus floor. In the case of concave and this osteotome, it penetrates and elevates the sinus floor. The concave end osteotome is used to fracture the sinus floor and there's also mallet. There's metal mallet and plastic mallet. Simply speaking, the head of the mallet, whether it is made of metal or plastic, that's how we differentiate it. The mallet with plastic head is much more stable and patient experiences less discomfort. Osteotome can be used, as shown, second, lateral approach. Sinus curette is used here. There are five sinus curette set that is sold from Ostem, and they serve different purposes. If you look at the sinus curette kit sold from Ostem, this is a very good sinus curette kit. I currently use this kit as well. At first, the people use freer elevator and small freer elevator, on the other side of which is bone graft carrier. These are used mostly in the beginning. There are two curettes for anterior part elevation, and there's membrane separator and curette with bone packer. Sinus curette for anterior side, it can be divided into short and long. When we do lateral approach, to elevate the anterior part, this curette is used. Depending on the position of the window, the anterior part can be short or long, so that's why there are two types. These curettes are used only for elevation of anterior part. Second is membrane separator. In doing lateral approach, out fracture technique is used to form the lateral approach window. After bone lid is removed, the membrane separator is used to detach the membrane on the window side. On the other side, there's bone plugger. This is to push the bone graft onto the mesial wall or to the anterior side.
as shown when we begin these areas when trying to detach them membrane separator is used next is freer elevator this is most basic this is a smaller version of nasal freer there's flat end and concave end at the beginning curved end is used to elevate the membrane as shown the width is about 5.2 millimeters even though this is small freer when you form window in a small manner at times that the can't go in in such cases there's a smaller elevator called membrane elevator and with that elevation is performed this is periosteal elevator part it's flat I personally use this when I pack in the graph material I use it when I pack the bone graph material in this is the flat end using the periosteal elevator out fracture is performed curved end is used to push the membrane I detach the membrane this is the final tool there is bone carrier and membrane elevator on one side it's a spatula type you carry the bone graft material to do bone graft and on the other side when the bone lid is small or if you want to do membrane detachment more accurately you can use membrane elevator when I do lateral approach to do sinus membrane elevation, I use this tool most frequently. Today we talked about the overview of sinus surgery and the tools used in sinus surgery. There are lots to discuss and if you're interested in more specific details, I hope you come to the seminar and have a discussion with me. Thank you for watching.